The Corps of Engineers from Fort Belvoir to all theaters of operations. An engineer's war, a specialized war, a war of complexities and scope, demanding the ultimate and trained manpower. Engineers must be oriented and adapted to a multitude of tasks. They must be ready for specific assignments wherever battle lines are drawn and behind the lines. They must be ready to build and to destroy, to attack and to fight off counterattack. They must be trained to the minute. The basic lessons of soldiering start the recruit on a course of great variety. All his talents towards skill, ingenuity and application are to be challenged. From super construction jobs to knots. But the fundamentals do come first and trainees at Fort Belvoir learn that rigging is just as important in their training as any of the other steps toward the mastery of military engineering. Demolitions. Knowing just how much of a knockout wallop is wrapped up in each deadly package and how to apply it most effectively. Tools of the trade. Fitting the modern design of warfare. Tools that shortcut the job and ensure perfection of performance. Basic work like carpentry and specialized training like earth moving. Proper handling, care and maintenance of the angle dozer and other machinery for lifting and moving the soil. A far cry from pick and shovel days. Know-how that becomes mighty important when engineers tackle the bomb shattered landscapes of a score of fronts. Water supply, pumping, purifying, storing, and dispensing. Equipment and methods cleared up for the GIs. Advanced training, including important lessons in the employment of mines, layout, surveying, recording, and reporting. Then the thrill of actually installing the mines and to counteract highly developed enemy mine techniques, probing, mine detectors, and all the tricks of removal are taught. River crossing operations, introduction to the assault boat and the role the engineer must play in assuring its safe and effective use. The storm boat, high powered craft, is also demonstrated for the engineers in training. They're told of its value for rapid crossings of wide streams. Footbridges, their employment and construction explained and practiced. The pneumatic fountain bridge. First the chart work, floating and fixed sections analyzed. Then actually handling one of the pneumatic floats. Fountain bridges of various weights and designs, implanted in the minds of the students by the only foolproof method, actually doing the job. Again, tools which the men learn are used for something new and different in bridges. The Bailey Bridge, a prefabricated structure, easily portable, amazingly strong. Rapidly assembled or disassembled, it has already played an historic role in this war. The long hours of lecturing and actual practice will take on deep significance once these men are out in the fighting areas. You'll see later, through the medium of combat films, all the dramatic importance attached to rapid, efficient bridge construction. Repair, maintenance, reinforcing, all come in for detailed discussion. Mud does not halt outdoor work. It adds to the realism of training. They learn to build roads. Without roads, the best equipped army can become bogged down, worthless without speed of movement. Engineers learn to build structures of every description. They construct housing for our troops and learn the value of teamwork and the art of reducing the work of hours to briefest minutes. All these, plus a mountain of other training details, to get ready for that important day when, as engineers, they must move in with an attacking army. 
down the nets in drill procedure. Down the nets in procedure labeled the real thing. Engineers must eliminate obstacles, clear and mark the beaches, help bring supplies ashore, construct roads and bridges, laying out dumps for fuel, water and rations. Air support aids in clearing the way for the first assault troops. Big naval guns knock out shore-based installations. Wave after wave moves up to battered beaches where the entrenched enemy has to be blasted out. Precious minutes ticking away of the H hour on this D-Day. Timetables and planning and operations repeated over and over again. Trained troops pouring out of massive barges in endless numbers. And always, the men must see that the job clicks. Men and machines, which engineers push to the full limits of their versatility. Steel mats on the beaches to prevent vehicles from floundering in soft sand. Then comes the problem of keeping the vehicles moving through dense and hazardous jungles. The few narrow makeshift passageways that do exist are almost impassable after heavy rains and continuous traffic. Speed is desired, but you can't get speed under these conditions. A job for the engineers, and they tackle road building problems in wet and steaming hot jungles in the following manner. Here a corduroy road logs and sweat and all the shortcuts learned during training days to convert swampy terrain into a road suitable for rapid passage of fighting equipment. Here the bulldozer cutting and ripping through the dense growth, its blade shearing off everything that stands in the way. Surveying and measuring the site of a new road. Boring into natural coral deposits to get surfacing material through blasting. Making full use of an island's resources is a time-saving necessity. Abandoned enemy dynamite is used, saving our explosives for other jobs. Power shovels lift the coral into waiting trucks. Through stubborn mud, which quickly will become a surfaced road once the coral is spread and compacted. A road of this type is not expected to stand up like a concrete highway, but it can be completed in no time at all and is certainly an improvement over soggy jeep trails. A captured roller completes a road that'll help to flatten the enemy. Something new and effective added to the jungle, from roads to bridges, Timber construction is necessary when no other means exist. Again, local material and equipment are adapted to the task. Native workers learn Yankee tricks of the trade. Bulldozers drag the prepared stringers to the construction site. The engineers rig up a temporary ramp. Ingenuity that cuts down time and labor in moving the heavy stringers up into position. Pile bent, corbels, stringers, flooring, step-by-step -step operations, just the way they practiced at training camp. The engineers providing another transportation link for hard-fighting jungle troops. A bombed-out airfield useless now, but quickly restored by engineers who never know what it means to stop working. 
The same kind of heavy equipment they used to keep them rolling is now used to keep them flying. A grounded plane is like a clay pigeon out in this treacherous jungle country. It's got to get up there and fight. But safe takeoffs and landings are impossible without the airstrip the engineers are now finishing off with steel mats. 